Hey, Beetle. What? Can't help but notice the San Antonio Spurs have lost 16 straight. Thoughts? 20 is an even number, though. Going for it, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry. They told me to do it. They told me you guys to do are the it. worst. Oh, good start to the show. From Wondery, I'm Michelle Beadle. And I'm Peter Rosenberg. <laughs> and this is Over the Top. All right, so here's how the show works. Best stories of the week in sports and pop culture face off. We're going to crown a champion and answer one simple question. What is the undisputed most important thing on planet Earth this week? We're going to decide it the only way that we actually know how, and that's to use Royal Rumble rules. We'll start with two stories. We decide which one's more worthy to discuss and which one has to go. After 90 seconds, a new story will be introduced, and we'll have to decide whether we want to keep talking about our current story or switch to the new one. We don't know the order of stories coming our way, but we do decide which ones get thrown over the top rope. Peter, what's up first? All right, let's set it up. The first two topics entering the ring this week, Florida State University. Yes, the 13-0 ACC champion. Oh, they're still in the ACC? Awesome. Uh, they will not be competing for the college football national championship. They were left out of the college football playoff. Up against NFL officials Ooh. who said they did not see a, quote, material restriction on a crucial pass interference no call late in the Chiefs Packers game on Sunday. You want to talk FSU not making the college football playoff or another blatant miss by NFL referees? So what you're really asking me is which set of grown men crying do I want to discuss more? Well, 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 grown versus semi-grown. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Although the ones crying the most are the ones that either went yeah, there, yeah, probably. Didn't go there at all. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with FSU. So okay. Chiefs, you're going over the top. And, and let me just say why I support you on this. If you care, the reason I support you is like everyone's making a ton out of that no call. And I do get it. At the same time, I'm so not a big fan of a game literally being determined by 50 right. yard pass interference that like and and as bad of a play as it was, he did also make contact with the ball. Like I, I'm just not as upset about it as everybody else. Yeah, FSU. Look, I do. I would like to preface all of this by saying I had to get rid of the word unfair in my vocabulary at a very young age. And since then, I've cringed at even using it as an adult, even in moments perhaps when it was justified. This is probably one of those moments where the word unfair is justified. And the reason I say that is really because of what you just said. It's it's not fully grown men. It's some young, young people who are being taught an adversity lesson very early on in life. But the problem is it's not an organic adversity. It's one that they made up and that they screwed them over with. And so for me, it's like, hey, go out there, win all your games and you'll be rewarded. Except for you, Florida State, (laughs) you will not be. You will be punished. It's a bummer. I don't like Florida State. Don't like the fan base pretty much. But I do feel like they got screwed. Listen, I say this often on the radio and then sort of get funny looks because as you know espn loves some college football and i am not a fan Mm. um and this perfectly sums up why i generally hate college football like i can give you 50 different reasons why you know from the coaches having to walk out with armed guards next to them (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to, you know, setting up your schedule where you're beating teams by 70 points. Like, there's yep. a lot of things I don't like. But ultimately, even though they've added this college football playoff, it's still not a legit playoff system. Nope. It's just not. People deciding who makes the playoffs is not a playoff for me. So nope. I feel for Florida State. They did everything they were supposed to do, and they still don't get to play. It's a bummer. It's a bummer. Uh, all right, that's a... Uh, ooh. That's some tough talking music I'm hearing right now. Coming in hot! Houston Rockets coach Ime Odoka was ejected for calling LeBron a, quote, soft-ass boy and, quote, a bitch. One of my favorite words, by the way. It's a great word. Do we want to continue talking about the college football playoff invitational or switch to Udoka and LeBron's beef? I think we got to go Ime 
and Brone. You know what I mean? <laughs> we really like do. we we covered college football over that's the enough. top beat go. Yeah. That, that's plenty. Let's talk about something that matters. <laughs> Let's talk about two men just going after it. And then like there's so many layers to this because there's like Ime Udoka, whose reputation's been a little bit sullied over the last couple of years. Why? What happened? Well, honestly, no one exactly knows. Glad you <laughs> asked, Beetle. But we know it wasn't great. No. And not. And now he's sort of getting his restart and doing a decent job in Houston. Yeah. But you have this moment where you're acting in a way that most people would say may, might be unbecoming of a head coach. But Fair. then, of course, after that, Beatle, you start digging into the history and looking at like, wow, how many times hmm. was Ime Hudoka trying to match up with LeBron James and getting sunned over the course of his career? Some of which in San Antonio, no? Uh, yeah. Ever- yeah. So uh, tell me, Beetle, what did you make of the soft ass boy or <laughs> soft ass bitch or whatever was said? <laughs> Bitching stuff and things. Um, this is such a a male. I, look, I can't speak for all females either. I can only speak for myself. But I do realize, and I'm I, I'm aware that there are certain words that seem to trigger grown men more than others. Um, and what I realized this morning in discussing this with others was that I don't have any words that you could call me that would trigger me. Because I'm just going to call you worse back and it's going to be fine. And they're just words. But apparently when you call a grown ass man a bitch, that's not good. And I didn't know. I didn't know. Who you really knew? didn't? I just feel like it's just it's just a word. It's so I mean, it's so it really is silly, but it's so built in. And I've, I've fallen victim to it myself. Both so if ways. I call you a bitch. You're going to get mad at me? It, it depends on the context. But like if we were having a public argument, like let's say we're at a dinner and we have a couple of drinks and we're like chatting and it's getting like a little tense and you're like, stop being a bitch. Nice. I'd, I, I'd be like, oh, I, I, it would. It would. It would. I, I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> Men are, we're pathetic. Anyways, <laughs> here comes another story that I'm I, somewhat interested in. Oh. Former commander head coach, although... This is where it's hard because he never coached the commanders, uh, but he Fair. did coach the Washington organization. Jay Gruden, someone I haven't thought of in quite a while, wow. has dissed Ron Rivera and the commanders on Twitter Mm-mm. after they were officially eliminated from playoff contention with a brutal loss, uh, a loss Sunday to the Miami Dolphins. Apparently giving up 45 points is just how we do, baby. All right. Do we want to keep talking about LeBron and Udoka? Or switch to Gruden dissing the commanders? Look, I'm going to do the, the giving thing here. And as much as I'd love to start just naming C words, F words, B words, all the words that have triggering capabilities, I realize that this is your team, Peter. And I'd like to hear what your thoughts are on Jay Gruden, a man whose name I had not heard in quite some time. Well, I mean, I truth be told, I didn't even know about this story until our producers trolled what? me by sending it to us. I had not seen it. This is even, but you know what, then I will carefully, Mr. James and Mr. Udoka, I would show you to the over the top section of the show because you're a fan of this team. This man is calling out your current coach. This I'm, cannot sit well. I want to talk about this. I'm a little upset that we didn't keep going into the trigger words because I wonder where fuckface ranks for you. But anyway, That's what I'm saying. You could call me that. It would never bother me. Honestly, I don't want Ron Rivera as my coach anymore. Fair. He will not be my coach anymore. He seems honestly sort of like a lovely man from a distance. Like <laughs> Seems like a nice dude, but he's not good. Um, it, this has not been a really great operation. There were times at which he did a nice job kind of like, you know what, you know what Ron Rivera did? Well, he sort of put up a nice front face while the Snyder thing was imploding at the end. Like he he was a semi steadying force in a really bad moment of like, it's about to end, but it hasn't ended yet. And I still have to like run this thing. Mm -hmm. So like, I do have some love for Ron Rivera in that regard. That said, new ownership group, Time to move on, move forward. And Jay Gruden out bro. of nowhere. Bro. Bro. Can all the Grudens go away forever? The For best real. Jay Gruden story of all time, and I don't I don't know if you'll remember this, but it was important to me, was mid-season when pictures came out of Jay Gruden, married at the time, hanging outside of a bar in D.C., sitting on the street, smoking a cigarette, clearly drunk. Sitting... On the street, like talking to chicks and just like smoking on the street. As one does, yeah. It's one of the classic moments in Washington football failure. Jay Gruden, <laughs> no personal beef, bruh. 
Don't need to hear from you again. Let's just move on. Also, who, like, look, there have been times where I've seen former employers have products on the air where I'm like, this is garbage. But I'm not about to get on the Twitter and talk about that. There's just some things you don't need to say because you're connected to it somehow. And there's you're never going to look good in that and moment, by the ever. way, and, and he's already said a lot. Like, he does radio spots in D.C. Like, he gets enough. his point. Like, just enough, dude. Get yeah. You're not getting the job, so just move on. And apparently you're not getting another job. Either, so. Sorry. Now do I say bitch? When do I say bitch? Oh, no, don't. That's too much. Okay, would, fair enough, fair enough. It would have been right there, though. That would have been the spot for it. <laughs> now the rest of the show, is this the time? Actually, this one, this next one might be the, the one. It turns out the Golden Bachelor, Gary, he spells it Jerry Turner, lied when he said he had not dated other women after his wife, Tony, died back in 2017. The man is 72 years old. I want to make sure we understand the Golden Bachelor is, is love for the older group. So do we continue talking about Jay Gruden or switch to the Golden Player? Uh, I Listen, how much is there to say about Jay Gruden? Even though, <laughs> even though I don't watch the Golden Bachelor, I'm mm -hmm. good. Let's talk some Golden Bachelor. Peace out, Jay. Have you, have you, smoke yourself a cig. And see yourself out. Let's talk about these old fogies getting it on. I mean, okay. So I don't have an issue. Look, I've read he did date someone about a month after his wife died. And when he was oh. talking about it, made it seem as though he hadn't really been dating. Now, of course, he has tried to sort of put a, a little bow on that saying, well, you know, you date people. You don't really remember how long it is. But the woman he allegedly dated says it went on for quite some time. So what I'm trying to say here, ladies and gentlemen, is that men lie. They lie. They lie in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. They would lie in death, too, if there was a way of gauging that. I don't know why any of this is surprising. What is surprising to me is that older women that were on the show acted like fools, crying, crying over a man. I would like to think there's a limit to when we stop crying over a dude. And I thought it'd be in our 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s. Turns out we never stop crying. God, I hate it. You know everything. what? I actually got to tell you. That's a, I'm not a woman. I don't know if you know that. What? Yeah, I'm sorry. Why do they even <laughs> give me this job? But, <laughs> uh, but I will say, I totally feel you on that. Because like, if you are an empowered woman who doesn't love the idea of like the the, the stereotypical woman crying over being heartbroken yeah. by some dickhead dude, it is a bummer to see. Even like widowed old ladies Thank who've you. gone through so much in life, you're still crying over some wrinkled up Bruh. dick? What are Bruh. we talking about? Like, how good could it be? Some shriveled up tea bags. Listen to me. I wanted to, I wanted this to be, because I always thought a dating show for older women, I mean, you know, I'm almost 50. Like, I, that's, I'm in. I, I'm into the idea of it. But I pictured it as like a bunch of women going out with this dude, all realizing he was a loser, coming back together, drinking some great expensive wine and laughing at him. Right. And crying over him. Oh, Ugh. Yeah. Like you have grandchildren. Gosh. You need to be able to tell your granddaughters not to cry over Thank dudes. You. Thank you. Not be crying over them. I, I feel you. You know what? Yes, I totally feel you, boo. Yes. <laughs> Our last story before the break is entering the ring, and it is the Eagles hype train, which has crashed versus the Niners this weekend. Sorry, producer Andrew Goldstein, your precious Eagles. <laughs> but all that anyone wants to talk about really is this Eagles security chief, Dom DeSandro. Oh. All right? And I'm allowed to do this stereotypical voice because Beatles Italian. Thank you. Um, you have he's covered. the guy. He's the guy who got ejected because he had an altercation <laughs> mid-game with 49er linebacker Dre Greenlaw. Are we talking about the old balls or moving on to Dom? De, what's his last name? DeSandro. DeSandro. Oh. <laughs> Look, yeah, as, DeSandro. As, <laughs> DeSandro. Look, I want to talk about shriveled up balls as next as much as the next person obviously right. sure but for me I'm, we're switching to desandro for a variety of reasons now uh, and by the way jerry gary uh show yourself <laughs> out. Uh, you, see, see yourself goodbye. out jerry gary <laughs> i don't even i'm not don't die, don't you go dying else. on us jerry gary <laughs> And no more lies. Too old. Uh, look, the DeSandro thing, Peter, I don't know about you, but this this game had so much pop and oh, so yeah. much zhuzh. Oh, and then you throw more. in, I mean, my, I've never seen a head of security, A, look like he came right out of central casting from a mob movie. This guy's a hired hitman. But then it was just like, he's a hero now. 
Because, of course, this game was in Philadelphia. And he got a standing ovation when he left. I can tell you I've never seen this before. He technically showed that he's actually really bad at his job, considering what his job is. But for one moment, I was in on the Dom DeSandro story, Peter Rosenberg. I was in. Let me stop you. at the. But you said you've never seen an NFL head of security like that. Let me stop you. I've never seen an NFL head of security, like, on the field, like, involved. I, I mean, if you were to ask me, do the commanders have, like, a head of security? Oh. I, I guess I'd be like, maybe? Sure, yeah, I think so. I mean, do you really need that? You have 53 dudes who could crush anyone, but okay, Great sure. Point. Makes sense. But, like, the involvement and the, like, literally getting back and – dude – Frankly, it's crazy, and it's crazy that Greenlaw was ejected. He did. He did. He did boop him. I think he booped him a little bit. Yeah, but you're a lot. Why can't you? It's like to me, that's like booping a fan. He has no business being involved in the player I scuffle. I agree. Also, who's he there to secure? The coaches, the players, people from the stands? Because you're not facing the stands, so you wouldn't know if they came out on the field. I don't know who he's securing. I uh, yeah. I don't. I don't under. <laughs> I still have. You know what? I still have questions. There are more questions to be asked on this subject. So many. Good. I hope it makes it because we're halfway through the show right now. The most important topic of the day. Way to go, Philly. Not the Eagles. It's Dom DeSandro. Never thought. Never thought. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Over the Top, where right now Dom DeSandro. Yeah, that Dom DeSandro. Who? What? Yeah. Philadelphia Eagles, head of security. Probably has many sandwiches named after him. He is currently our most important topic. Peter, what's our next challenger? I wonder where Dom DeSandro gets his steak. Like, what's his, is he a Pat's guy? Ooh, is, he, is he a every, Jim's he's a guy? He's yeah, everything guy. Uh, yeah, maybe. Hey, who knows? Maybe he's going to Ishka Bibbles. We don't know. <laughs> All right. Here's, here's an offbeat story that I think our listeners will appreciate. All right. You're going to be surprised we're covering this. Taylor Swift no was in attendance at Lambeau Field for the Chiefs-Packers game and saw Casey lose for the first time. Do we want to keep talking Dom DeSandro, or do we want to talk Tay-Tay and her boo-boo losing the big game? Oh, Tay-Tay. Uh, one I'm morally against. The other one I just don't care. Uh, you know what? Actually, I do care because the streak is over, and I think you thought there was some validity to that streak. So you know what, Dom DeSandro? <laughs> I guess I'm throwing you out. I Second time job. in two days. You're out of here, buddy. <laughs> like, All you do is get kicked out. Steady stop go. by <laughs> stop by Jim's, get yourself a, a delicious steak and call yes. it a day, my friend. But Taylor Swift, not just mm. in attendance, but flew in, it looks like, with old Brittany Mahomes and wore what I can only assume were either leather or matching vegan leather pants. What say you? Well, I didn't catch the pants. All right. <laughs> Lucky. But I and and I'm sorry that this loss has happened, and I will tell you. Uh, she may witness more losses if this relationship if this relationship lasts because oh, I don't know about the Chiefs' ability to win on the road at all. I don't know the last time I feared the Chiefs having the ball late in the game less than I did last night. Like I just did I not think I was like they're not going to score and win. And this is Green but, Bay. But wait, but you stayed right because he's the well, only quarterback that makes you stay even that long. No, I, I would. I don't know if I'd say he's Still. the only one, but he's Ugh. the highest on the list, right? Like you'd be curious to see Josh Allen with the ball in that spot. Like there are a few guys you'd want. Yeah, to Yeah, but their there. record's garbage now. I don't even care. I know, I know. But, but the point is, this could be there could be losses in this relationship, and we're gonna have to see if they fight through. But here on Over the Top, we've given Tay Tay a hard time a few times, and in fact, I've literally had friends reach out to be like, you know, my wife saw what you posted, and no. she really doesn't like what you're saying about Taylor and you hate her and but and I'm like I don't hate you Taylor hate the truth is I really don't hate her. she actually seems yes. like a lovely person and based on the ideals that I believe Beetle and I share mm -hmm. I think we're in lockstep with her on a lot of things she seems mm -hmm. great just every once in a while it's a bit much but here on over the top I'm finally going to unveil a couple name that I think will make you truly love Taylor and Travis. Okay. Nobody knew what to call them. How do we come up with this with a sexy name? I have it. When I say this name for this couple, this celeb couple name, you tell me this just doesn't scream sex appeal and the front page of every newspaper and magazine in the country. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. The celeb couple name for Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. You take a little bit of Taylor and you take a little bit of Travis and you know what you get? What? Lorvis. <laughs> Are you? T Come on, that's not uh, sexy. There are parts of me tingling, Peter. Well, <laughs> well, Ooh, look, Lorvis <laughs> has made it to the red carpet. Lorvis this, sounds I like a 
what an insect <laughs> comes out of. <laughs> It really does. It sounds scientific. See, everyone was searching for the sexy name. They wanted it to be. No, it's sitting right in front of you. It's Lorvis. Right in front of you all this whole time. <laughs> now we can. Now I can embrace this. I was you're, stuck, like we, most of us were. No, um, you're welcome. All right, Lorvis. Our next story entering the beautiful squared circle. The Jets are leaning. Oh God. The Jets are leaning towards naming Zach Wilson their starter once again, but. Reportedly, he is reluctant to step back into the role. Do we want to continue talking about Lorvis or switch to Zach Wilson and the Jets? Dear God, Peter. I think we have to say goodbye to Lorvis, which hurts me to say, (laughs) and talk about Zach Wilson because this, it's the bane of my existence. My God. You know, just to open up, okay? (laughs) I, I I enjoy sports talk radio. Sure. I, I, I love my job at ESPN. It's a fun gig, hanging out with some friends. You did the same job, hanging yeah, out with Michael and it. Don, talking about New York sports. It's a good gig in the number one market. Yay, team. But the Yankees and Mets were hugely disappointing, and I'm not the world's biggest baseball guy, so I suffered through a disappointing season by both of those teams, saying, you know what? Aaron Rodgers and the Jets are coming in the fall. We finally have something to talk about. And four plays, four plays into the season, it was like God was just like, ha, 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 suckers, you're going to talk about crap for a whole full season. And it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And here's the funniest part. After watching the quarterback play mm. from Tim Boyle sure. and Trevor Simeon, Delish. I have to admit, I know Simeon's almost as sexy a name as Lorvis. <laughs> When you think about it, I know I I actually agree. Like you kind of have to go back to Zach Wilson because as bad as he is, he looks like Randall Cunningham <laughs> next to the aforementioned non NFL players Boyle and Simeon. But then the rumor is, he says I don't want to play. I don't. I could get hurt. No, I like it. What? What? Tell us. Tell I me like what you it. like. If I'm Zach Wilson, I am texting back four words: new phone. Who dis? And then I am never responding to another text from anyone in that organization again until it's them telling me where I'm going next. Period. Leave me the hell alone. You have set me up for failure more than a few times. We're done. We are done. If this topic remains, I have a rebuttal to that. Okay. Okay. All right. The challenger entering the ring, Mm. Mark Cuban. He's selling a majority stake of the Dallas Mavericks. Do we want to talk about Mark Cuban or stay with Zach Wilson? Look, uh, Mark Cuban, seemingly one hell of a deal, getting getting to continue to do the cool part of the job, sit courtside, travel with the team, do the fun stuff, make a few billies, uh, build a casino resort. You know, this the same. Rich get richer, Peter. Boring. Uh, 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 Thank you. Goodbye. (laughs) See you later. Run for president. Do whatever you're going to do. I don't really care. Shark Tank. I don't don't care. Here's my rebuttal as we continue on with the Zach Wilson story. So I would agree with you. So Mm -hmm. there was a whole trending topic when this happened the other day of it said, I'm with Zach or good for Zach. Oh, good for Zach is what was trending. I would would respect and play along with the good for Zach, Beetle, if what we heard was that he said what you're saying. Because this is obviously all hearsay. He said it supposedly, according to Diana Rossini of The Athletic, he said it to teammates and people involved with the organization otherwise. All we heard was that he said he didn't want to get hurt. That's what's lame. If he had said what you said, I would respect it. If he had been like, nah, I'm good. Y'all have benched (laughs) me multiple times. I'm going to go ahead. If you guys want to void my deal, whatever you choose to do, do it. But I'm not playing your shenanigans anymore. This is a ridiculous, embarrassing team. I'm moving on. That, to me, would have been like a power position move to make. Yeah. But the story that came out is that he's like telling Aaron Rodgers, like, I don't really want to go back in there. I don't want to get hurt. It it doesn't play well, Beatle. That that does not play well. Not in the NFL. He's a young man who's basically been neutered uh, by his employer time and time again. Teammates who printed up shirts with his replacement's face on Hey, that's Mike effing white to you. Bro, I don't care. I'm not going back in there for any of y'all. Y'all all suck. 
all y'all suck. That's my speech. If I'm Zach Wilson, I go in there and go like, ha, you guys know, there's no chance I'm going back in there. You you're suck, you're, you're you suck, going with you're the cool. old F you, yes. F you, F you, you're yep. cool, F you. Yeah, I feel yeah. you, I feel you. That's it. Too much, too much, too little, too late, I'm out. By the way, no matter what we do, Peter, we can't get away from the Jets talk. It's no, just, no. It's just and by, I still have more works. to say right now, by the way, so we'll see what happens here. <laughs> well, let's here we go, because we got some bales and we got some thunder. The Undertaker. Yeah. That Undertaker presented Texas quarterback Quinn Ewers a championship belt after they beat Oklahoma State to win the Big 12. So I ask you, do we continue talking about what we wish Zach Wilson would tell the Jets, or do we switch to Texas and the Undertaker? You know I love the dead man. You know sure. I love all things WWE, and I love that they're making money by selling these titles. They have NFL titles that are for really? sale. But no, let's continue on. We we did a lot of CM Punk last week, and that was a really valid story. I'm down for Undertaker in retirement. Like, don't get me wrong, it's cool seeing him around. He's like, now he's like love a dude it. who talks and is funny and does like one man shows. It's awesome. But no, let, let's. There's still meat on the Zach Wilson bone. Undertaker, I'm so sorry, sir. You're going over the top. Because it's a really crazy story. You're right. The whole Mike White thing happened where mm -hmm. his teammates, imagine how bad you have oh. to be at football for your teammates to be excited for Mike White. Mike freaking White. To take over. And they were excited. Yeah. But here's, here's the question I have. We got to move beyond Zach Wilson. Okay. What is happening in New York? Like, mm -hmm. who is running the team? I don't understand. Aaron Rodgers is now, as of a couple of days ago, happy 40th, 40 years old, okay? How was there no plan for a real backup? The names behind him were Zach Wilson, who'd proven that he could not play, followed by Tim Boyle. Then when Rodgers goes down and the whole world is saying, oh my God, maybe they can go get this one. Maybe they'll go find a way to get Jacoby Brissett, or where's Colt McCoy? Can we get him a contract? I mean, hey, Joe Flacco didn't play terrible for Cleveland last week. No, no, no. no. They don't get anyone with any track record. Nothing. They go get Trevor Simeon as yeah. their third option, a guy You're who's welcome. always been terrible. Do you know how bad Tim Boyle is? Beetle, I don't know much about college football, as I already proved on this show, but I know one thing. Generally, players who make the NFL, even if you've never heard of them, you look yep. up their college stats, and they balled out. Tim Boyle sucked in college. Like, so just, can you explain to me what's even happening with this team that they're unable to trot out a presentable quarterback who's not named Aaron Rodgers? I think, simply put, you're dealing with um, an inept organization in the sense that they got so excited and caught up in the in this beautiful, shiny toy that they were going to bring on that was going to change everybody's lives. And when the shiny toy kaput in the first 90 seconds of it they had nothing nothing to back themselves up this, which is why i have zero sympathy zero for the organization what the hell were y'all thinking a 40 year old was gonna go forever i i, I know I, I know I, I, and by the way i still have more here but the next challenger is coming down let's see if okay. this story can be dethroned i don't oh i don't know the 14th anniversary of jersey shore's debut oh, on mtv knows. was this weekend do we want to stay Jets and Zach Wilson debacle or go a little GTL, Jim Tan Laundry, Jersey Shore? I've already done my bad Italian-American impersonation once today. If you think I'm going to do it twice, you've lost your goddamn mind. So for the love of everything, and I speak for America when I say GT. F O H. Oh, not G T L, G T F O H. I'm with you. I'm Except with for you, Vinny, you're cool. All right. No, uh, Vinny's, no <laughs> love Vinny. Paulie D's a cool guy. I, 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 by the way, I'm friendly with a lot of the Jersey Shore you're after right. all these years somehow. And they're lovely. Oh, I saw I saw Chippendales with Vinny in it. I, you know, kudos. Chef's kiss. That's all, all right. I got. Back to Zach Wilson. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> all right. So we stay with Zach Wilson. And what is the future of this team who is now, by the way, this is fascinating. I mean, even though it's dreadful, it is mm. fascinating. You realize, Beetle, they now have to hitch their wagon to an old man coming off an Achilles hey. injury. They <laughs> yeah. have to hitch it even tighter. They have no other option now. They are Nothing. fully in bed with Aaron Rodgers. But here's the question I ask you. If they just lose out and actually end up with like a top three or four draft pick. Mm-hmm. Do they draft the next person? Oh, great. Fully move on from Zach Wilson finally. Let him mm -hmm. move on. And then put this 
rookie behind Aaron Rodgers and maybe actually build something and hope so like that Rodgers can play all a season. Over again. So he's going to get upset again and sensitive when they draft a quarterback, even though he has to be realistic and he's 40? Could you get sensitive again at this age, coming off the Achilles? How could you still? Could I get sensitive or could Aaron Rodgers get sensitive? Those are two different people, very much so. Because you're right, it is interesting. The word on the streets is Greets. that he's the one who liked Tim Boyle. So you obviously wanted a totally non-threatening backup, which is weird because they would never have benched you anyway. Like, <laughs> Can you get they... the ugly girl to fill in for me when I'm gone? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, I know, I know bitches like that, Peter. And it ain't cute. Name it's a name. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Call someone out in the industry. Well, they're still working, kind of. Oh. So no. No, I think I think this is hilarious. The only reason everyone keeps their jobs is they've got like a stay right now is because of the Aaron Rodgers of it all. But the minute this fails again, it, everybody's gone. Everybody everybody's from Douglas gone. down. Gone. Period. How are we still talking about the Jets, Peter? How is this? Happening? I don't know. And they, and yeah. I, I think they have they have one they're one away from winning out the week, by the way. This would be the longest streak in the history of the show. There's a lot oh on the God. table here. All right, let's see what okay. the next story is. A lot of pressure. Let me let me sit up straight. Our final story of the day, Roger Goodell reportedly wants to ban the brotherly shove from the NFL. I know what's going to happen. Do we want to continue talking about Aaron Rodgers, the Jets, Zach Wilson, and the debacle that is, or switch to Goodell and the tish push? Is there... Who, well, hold up. Who put Goodell wiping tush push? Somebody somebody gets a raise. Yeah, we have a graphic that says Goodell <laughs> wiping tush push. No, that's, that's got to be a Goldstein that's thing. That's perfect. Um, how much is there really to say about the tush push thing? It's been talked about all year. I mean. And why would you outlaw it? Like, it's fine. Everyone's allowed to do it. Everyone. Like, either, either figure it out. Like, I don't really. Don't get me wrong. It's annoying when you're playing against the Eagles and you're like, oh, here's a guaranteed first down. Like, that is frustrating. <laughs> But, like, yeah, everyone should be allowed to do it. Yeah, stop yeah. it. Stop it. I, I, stop I it or do it. I don't care. I don't think there's a lot to do here. I think we got to close out with Zach Wilson. Wow. I really do. Okay. I will do the honors of throwing Roger Goodell over the top rope. Oh, that's God. Right everyone and here. you know what? As we throw you out, Roger, I'm thinking about on draft day your stupid, awkward <laughs> hugs when you get out of that armchair. It, I, oh, God. Is there anything more putrid? Than oh, Roger I'm thinking of the fact that. He will be a billionaire as a commissioner of a sports league. Is that what they're saying? Is that going to happen? Well, I mean, if you just start doing the math, it's he's in the, what, 500 million whatever. It's ridiculous. I'm going to shove him over the top rope. And by the way, that is pure jealousy on my part. Uh, Zachy Wilson, you know what? If, if, since he made it to the end of the show, we should just show him love, right? Okay. The guy needs a hug. <sighs> Can I tell you the truth? Yeah, sure. I have watched many a game where I am <laughs> legitimately rooting for Zach Wilson because I think... <laughs> Man, would my job get better if he just played well and they were fun to talk about. And You're somehow, right. every time you think he's taking like a little step forward, he takes like a brutal step back and takes like a 25-yard sack on third down to be knocked out of field goal range. And you're like, every eight-year-old watching knows you had to throw the ball away. Why don't you know how to do it? Because um, he's muted and he's scared. But, but you know what? It's his fault because let's talk about the headbands, honestly. it's. Wow. We're doing this. It's the head. Honestly, when you have that douchey a look, I mean, can we be real? Is he top he, three douchiest looks in the quarterback world? No. Oh my God. He, what? Who's you know who's that? You know who Zach Wilson looks like? Oh no. Have I already said this on this show? Because this is like a way so. of life for me. Zach Wilson looks like one of the bad guys in Karate Kid. He looks like he should be in Cobra. Like Ralph Kai. Macchio. Oh no. I'm sorry. No, who, no. Who do you think the bad guys are? M Macchio's the baby face. He looks like he should be one of the heels. Like, he doesn't look like Johnny from... He looks like Johnny Russo. Right, he's got the guy. douchey hair. No, Johnny bad Lawrence. Guy. Johnny Lawrence is the bad guy. He's the hero. Oh, sorry. He's Russo the... is Ralph Macchio. Yeah. Lawrence Johnny Lawrence is, is the, the good guy because he dresses like a skeleton and kicks ass. No, no, Ralph no, Macchio no, is the wimpy no, no. loser <laughs> anti-hero. <laughs> What are we talking about? You realize how slow I am and how hard it was for me to figure out that you understood, but you were actually saying you no, root I understand. for Johnny Lawrence. Yeah, but yes. guy. But doesn't Woo. Wilson look like that with his hair sticking over God, his he headband? Does. Like he's now it, just well. Now I love him. Good job, Peter. You convinced me. I'm a Zach Wilson fan for life. Well, bad news. You root for the worst quarterback in the NFL. I'm sorry. For now. For now. Let's move on. Let's put a bow on it. Because guess what? We've we have found. 
a winner. We have come to a Thank decision. You. A new, undisputed, most important thing on planet Earth. And it is Zach Wilson and the debacle that is the New York Jets. Zach to the future, everyone. Congratulations. I love it. I love it. We nailed this one. Absolutely nailed it. Zach, we are sending you virtual hugs. I'm proud of what we've done today. <laughs> we put together Always. the longest streak we've ever done on the show. True. We covered a lot of ground. Too much. We came up with Lorvis. Got to say bitch. A lot of that. A lot has been done. The Spurs have still lost a lot of games in a row. They've probably that lost is, seven since we started this. That is going to do it <laughs> for us. Tune in next week to determine the only thing you need to care about and what goes over the top. Stay.